This film shows Suki, a five-year-old Cleveland Bay mare that we broke to ride and drive, walking calmly out of the yard. It is important that horses listen to the driver's instructions as to what pace to work at and do not jog or pull on the reins when they are fresh out of the yard because they are excited. Sometimes when training we will walk for the whole duration of the drive, sometimes we will trot straight out of the yard, other times we will ask the horse to stand on its way out the yard and the next day walk straight out. This teaches the horse to listen to the driver and not anticipate for itself what it thinks it is going to be required to do. If a horse wants to trot for the first mile or so and will not walk straight out of the yard, some drivers let the horse do as it wishes, either because they do not know how to teach it otherwise or because they are frightened of the horse's response, i.e. rearing or jackknifing the carriage. However, this is a prime example of a lack of training of the horse and lack of the driver understanding their responsibility to educate their horse. This is often when people send their horses to trainers to be fixed, without understanding that they are often the cause of these issues. If you think of the horse as the engine, the motive power for moving the carriage, then how fast, or in what direction the horse goes, is down to the driver. No decision should ever be made by the horse. He should continue to follow an instruction until he is given the next one. Obviously, horsemanship plays a big part in this. You cannot expect any horse to trot indefinitely, for example, as unlike a car engine, they can get tired. It is therefore up to the driver to anticipate the journey and drive the horse accordingly, taking into account all the factors that can vary, such as weather, ground conditions, number of passengers on the vehicle, etc., so that the horse can fulfil the driver's requirements and is never asked to do more than it is physically capable of doing. We have heard of people being advised not to feed their horses short food because there is no point in fighting food. However, in our opinion, horses and work need to be fed well. An athlete cannot get fit or perform to the best of their ability if they are not getting the right nutrition, because they would not have enough energy. They need to be fed to ensure they maintain body condition, build muscles and have plenty of energy to do what is asked of them. We do not want our horses to behave well because they are tired or lacking in energy. We want them to behave well when they are fit, well fed and fresh out the stable. This proves that the horse is well trained and listening to the driver, rather than obeying because it is tired, which is dangerous because when the horse is not tired, or it gets fit, or is then well fed, any behavioural issues could come to the surface because the horse has not been trained properly. This is why when horses are with us we get them fit, capable of doing trips in the teens of miles without getting hot, sweaty or out of breath. If we can control the horses we train, fresh out of the stable, fed, in a rubber bit, that means we have done our job right and the horses are trained properly. This is crucial out on the roads because the horses are in a human environment. The horse has no road sense. It does not understand what white lines are for or why it should stay on the left side of the road, for example. We hear a lot of the time that people wouldn't take their horses out on dustbin day in case it spooks. In our opinion, this shows a lack of training or confidence in the driver or horse. And rather than accept this, the horses should be trained better. This is why, in our training, we also focus on teaching horses to cope with potentially frightening situations. We believe this should be done as part of any horse's initial training, to ensure they are safe, confident and happy in any sphere of harness work. You can see Sarah is on the reins, asking Suki to walk underneath flapping ribbons, over tarpaulin on the ground and over barrels. These get caught up around the horse's feet, but also around the wheels of the carriage, making the vehicle sound different behind her, but Suki does not panic. These other ribbons are made of a heavier material, so instead of flapping about Suki's head like the other ones, they lay all over her body as she goes through them. We have now put this windmill on Suki's bridle. Although it is difficult to hear on the camera, it makes a whirring noise as it goes round. Having a brightly coloured and moving object so close to their head is a big test for any horse. We are showing here that Suki is happy to listen to the driver and walk forwards even with this on her head. This teaches her not to panic should anything get caught around her blinkers or be blown towards her head by a gust of wind, and that whatever the distraction is, or however close to it, she still needs to listen to the driver at all times. We expect horses doing commercial work to get used to wearing plumes on their heads, driving trials horses to get used to wearing fly veils, and logging horses to get used to branches brushing past their heads, for example. 
so in our opinion the pleasure driving horse should also be used to different things on their bridles. Even with something so unusual so close to her head, Suki is not bothered or upset by it, which is what we are aiming for. Better to have a horse that can cope with these things and remain calm than have one rearing up in fright and bolting because something is making a noise near its ears. Okay. We show Suki entering a field, walking calmly in a wide open space. She will then turn round and head home. She knows she is going home because we have not done a loop. We have gone into the field in a straight line and turned round 180 degrees. As you can see, Sarah is driving her on a loose rein and she is only in a rubber bit, so if Suki wanted to trot on and pull the reins, firstly, Sarah would not be physically strong enough to stop her, and secondly, she does not have any assistance from a curb chain or a metal bit putting a vast amount of pressure and discomfort in the horse's mouth and therefore discouraging her from pulling forwards. As you can see, even with no contact on the reins and only in a soft rubber bit, she remains at the walk on a grass surface heading towards home.